What was the <laughs> Olympics opening ceremony actually about? And are we being gaslit? As Christians, I know this is several days into the fray now, but I felt like it was important to at least comment on this because of all of the different responses that I've seen from people, many of whom I know, that are making this connection between the Olympic opening ceremony celebration that we saw where a bunch of transformers reenacted what appeared to be their own celebration of the Lord's Supper. They said this is a celebration of the Feast of Dionysius. If you're not familiar at all with that, it's basically an ancient pagan festival. It goes all the way back to the ancient Greeks and, and probably earlier than that, where a bunch of pagans would sort of celebrate the gods through orgies and eating and drunkenness and so on. That's what this was a celebration of in their own words. Along those lines, I just thought... When I saw some of the responses and some of the way in which the media and even Christians are sort of like suppressing the outrage or attempting to suppress the outrage over what took place last Friday night, I thought I'd take a look at the situation and say, is this actually a legitimate response? Can we just say, hey, this is art at its finest? So here was the actual apology of Anne Discamps. You can take a look for yourself here. Clearly, there was never an intention to show disrespect to any religious group. The opening ceremony tried to celebrate community tolerance. We believe this ambition was achieved. If people have taken any offense, we are really sorry. When I first saw this apology, I thought it was kind of fascinating because as we know, that specific community that is always pushing us for tolerance, you know, us mean, bigoted Christians, they themselves didn't seem to use any wisdom at all with their presentation. And is this legitimate? You know, what, what, what do we make of this supposed apology? I, again, taking a look at it here. If people have taken offense we are really sorry. This was not meant to show any dis disrespect to any religious groups. Well, it, it did, a, a, a pretty large one, the largest one in the world. And in doing what you were attempting to do, that is tolerance, promote tolerance, you actually alienated the maybe potentially largest demographic of people that exists in the world. Not very tolerant. And this gets to the root of one of the biggest problems that Christians have with this whole celebration. It's not just the fact that maybe it wasn't an open mockery of the Lord's Supper, which I'll talk about in a moment, but it's the fact that it wasn't demonstrating the very principles that this particular demographic constantly preaches at us. If they want us to be tolerant towards them, then why would they do something that so closely resembles a sacred event in our history and do it in, an, in a way that apparently is this huge mockery? Why would they do that? It just doesn't seem to be using not only wisdom, but it but it's also taking these issues, which we as Christians have historically believed are wrong, and smashing them together into one of our most sacred and celebrated events. I mean, really not the best move when you think about it. A lot of Christians felt like this was just a big middle finger to us, and rightly so, because it so closely parallels something that we hold dear, whether the criticism is legitimate or not. Now, secondly, do you actually buy that this was inspired by the Feast of the Gods, you know, that painting that was done however many years ago, I don't know, back in the 1600s sometime. Here is an actual comparison of the three different images. And the reason I put the one by da Vinci on the top is because it's it's actually historically the first. His, his Last Supper portrait picture is actually the, it, it came first, you know, back in the late 1400s, he painted this beautiful painting. Everybody knows about it. It, it came out of a predominantly, not predominantly, in a completely Christian culture. And then in the mid 1600s, you see this painting here. Now, this is like 100 years before America was founded. The one in the middle is the Feast of the Gods. That's, that's the one that you can see clearly took inspiration 
From the, the Last Supper, painting by Da Vinci was painted first. It's the one on top. The feast with to Dionysius or whatever that is. It's, it's in the middle. And then now you've got the celebration that we saw last Friday night on the bottom. So I'm just honestly asking you as a reasonable person, like, why would a bunch of people dress up in drag and do something that is even remotely close to the Last Supper painting by Da Vinci? Why would anybody do this? Because living in the world that we live in, Nobody, absolutely nobody is thinking of the Feast of Dionysius or the Feast of the Gods or whatever the heck this is. Nobody's thinking about that. Everybody is thinking the Last Supper because a third of the world's population identifies themselves as Christian. So most of the world is, is Christian, the world's largest religion. That's because King Jesus is reigning in heaven and he's conquering the nations through the power of his love and the work of his church throughout history. But what you see here is a bunch of people doing this presentation of an event that nobody even knew about before Friday night. It bears striking resemblance. And the painting, by the way, that they're claiming that they took inspiration from itself took inspiration from the Last Supper. And, and, and this is something, a connection that many people are making. So to me, it's kind of undeniable that there's no connection and that there was that it's almost like they're saying there's no significance culturally to the Lord's Supper. And we as Christians, we're just dumb and we are reading into some of these things. We are the ones that have the problem, not the people who put this on. Not the men who are dressing up in women's clothing. Clothing, No, no, no. It's us Christians that created Western culture and many, many of the freedoms that we have today. The freedoms that these people are taking advantage of when they put a public display on like this for all the world to see. So do we have a right to be upset about this? Absolutely, because it's the most natural parallel to be made. It demonstrates the gross hypocrisy. And then they have the arrogance to attempt to gaslight us on top of that by saying that we're crazy for making this connection. We just don't understand art. Well, I understand blasphemy when I see it. I understand mockery when I see it. You don't have to be very smart to see these things. Clearly, that's what it was. But having said all that, is the issue just the fact that this is a, 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 a throwback, a, a, an homage to an ancient Greek pagan festival, the Olympics, you know, were first held in ancient Greece. Is, is that all this was? And should we not be upset about it at all? Does that sort of alleviate all of our fears? Do we as Christians just all of a sudden go, oh, oh gosh, I was so wrong for having any negative feelings about this at all? Absolutely not. The biggest problem with this is the overreaching immorality, the celebration of hyper-sexualized lifestyles and just basically smashing it in the faces of a family event. You have families all over the world tuning in. Their kids are sitting there watching the Olympics and we have a bunch of men dressing up like women and celebrating an ancient pagan festival in a form that is reminiscent of a blatant mockery of something that a third of the world's population holds dear. It's, it's just terrible all around. And there's been this ground swelling in recent decades, you know, where we Christians are, we're a little fed up. We're tired of it. We're tired of, of people telling us that we're the problem. We're, we're tired of people telling us that we're hypocrites. Last I checked, Christians are the ones who are going out there and trying to save the world. If you're immersed in a lifestyle that is immoral, that is wrong, that is sinful, whether it's sex or, or any other, there's many forms of sin. We want you to have everlasting life. We don't want you to buy into hollow and deceptive lifestyles, a lifestyle that ultimately will put you in danger of God's judgment after you die one day. And we don't want a, a culture that in recent history, and beyond recent history, we the West has been Christian for over a thousand years, for a long, long time, you know, since, I mean, maybe 1700 years, if you go all the way back to Constantine and then, you know, the, the Roman Empire. Like, it's, we've been Christian. We've gotten rid of the pagan gods. And all of a sudden, we see them re-emerging today. T take a look at what this website had to say about the matter. This is hyperallergic.com. I have no idea who this is, what the group is, and what their political leanings are. But, but take a look at what they had to say here. The performance was actually an authentic representation 
of the history of Greece and its brainchild, the Olympic Games themselves, the, the, the Olympic Games that we're doing. This is the, We owe this to ancient Greece, so clearly we have to give homage, honor to the, the ancient pagan Greek gods that aren't even really gods. The Olympic Games themselves. Bacchus, the counterpart of the Greek Dionysius, is traditionally depicted as an androgynous part of of his role as god of transformation. Ancient Bach feasts devoted to Bacchus may have included queer celebrations and modern bacchanalia, reflective of the rising popularity of devotion to ancient Greek and other pre-Christian deities often feature pride components. Are, are you catching this here? I mean, basically what, what they're acknowledging, I mean, it's not hard for me to see. This is plain as day. Like I, the, this is the first thing I thought is we're, we're, we're going back to our ancient paganism. That's what this website says. That's what, what is so obvious. So if you're a part of this movement that's telling me I'm crazy because I look at this as mockery, I'm telling you I'm not stupid. I see exactly what you're doing. You're trying to reassert ancient pre-Christian, pagan religion, and you want all the world to celebrate it with you. They go on to say, this is what Paris's opening ceremonies depict, a bacchanalia. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that word right. Reinforcing the divinity of LGBTQ people who are increasingly returning to pagan devotions. I mean, listen to this. Basically acknowledging what this is and what's happening in Europe. The West is increasingly going back to its pagan origins. They say here they, they do this when they are cast out of or leave churches that abuse and persecute them, such as the Catholic Church that funded hundreds of Last Supper paintings. I just thought this was wild. It literally acknowledging this is just blatantly pagan. And these people... These, these poor, terrible, persecuted people are apparently given a, a platform at the world's largest stage when all the eyes of the world are on Paris, France. Are they really persecuted? Getting back to the, quote, apology that was given, is this really inclusive? Like, do all the Christians that are currently boycotting the Olympics feel like they are being included? No, they don't. Now, I just want to go on to finish this because I want you to see the depth to which these people are owning what they're doing. Quite frankly, it's scary. Many drug performances are Christian. Wow. And to argue that they have no place recreating iconographic art. That's all The Last Supper was. It wasn't a real historical event. It's iconographic art. And, and that's, I guess, what they're trying to say this whole thing is it's just art. It's to deny their own religious histories. Oh, okay. As oh, this, this got me. As pastor and drag queen, Marge Aaron Johnson, that's better than Barbara Butch, who was the apparent Christ-like figure in the middle of the depiction that we saw on Friday night. Marge Aaron Johnson said in an Instagram post responding to critics of the Olympic ceremonies, drag is a sacred art. <laughs> what? No, the, uh, friends, the Last Supper w was a sacred event that actually happened in history. Drag is not a sacred art. Drag is immorality. It is immoral. Men should not dress like women. It says that in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus. Check it out. But they try to suggest it is a spiritual experience to transform yourself through the art of dress. Friends, honestly, I'm really not left with much to say at this point. And quite frankly, I'm a little blown away by the, the arrogance. And the, they just must think we are so, so stupid. They really must think that. With, with, with an excuse like this, if this was just an ancient pagan festival that they were depicting, we have nothing to complain about. Oh, it's, we were just, we were getting all upset over nothing. No, we were getting upset over a bunch of stuff. We are upset because we are supposed to be upset. This is not only mockery, but it is blasphemy. It is a celebration of immorality. It's, it's like the golden calf episode in Israel's history. And that's really what has happened to the West. 
We are reenacting our own golden calf experience, trying to go back to our Egypt, trying to go back to our ancient pagan roots. And God sees this stuff. God sees it. I, I was encouraged by the taking to the streets of all the Christians in Paris. It was phenomenal. I mean, I mean, seeing the streets flooded with thousands of Christians, candles and singing hymns to God. It was, it was really powerful to see. I'm, I'm also incredibly encouraged by the backlash that the Olympics and the city of Paris have received for this just disgusting display. Christians, let your voices be heard on this in the West while we still have an opportunity to let them be heard. Unlike the others out there, I'm going to encourage you to keep doing what you are doing because your ancestors built Western culture. In addition to that, the Bible is true, and there is a judgment coming. Those who openly practice immorality will be on the wrong side of that judgment. So I reach out to you this morning. If you are part of a community that dishonors God with your lifestyle, don't think that just because I believe in Jesus, I'm going to be saved. Yes, you will be saved through faith alone, in Christ alone. But if you are openly practicing immorality through your lifestyle, you cannot say that you have saving faith. That's what the Bible actually teaches about it. So search your own hearts on this. If, if you're out there and, and whether or not you were involved in this particular episode or you celebrate other forms of immorality in our culture, because there's lots of them out there, then search your own heart and think about that. God is a just judge. Yes, he is loving, and he's loving enough to give you a way out through true saving faith in his son. So I just wanted to encourage you today, don't let them gaslight you. You should be upset about this. If you're not, honestly, I'm kind of questioning your Christianity. If you haven't already done so, friends, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, Pastor AJ here, and thanks for visiting my channel. If you don't mind, I'm going to take just a sec to tell you about Gospel Ministries and our mission to help others experience, demonstrate, and share God's great gospel. If you want, you can pick up some of our merch in our YouTube store to help you communicate that same gospel message. And I'd love it if you would consider subscribing to this channel so that we can challenge your Christian walk through solid biblical teaching as it applies to culture and other issues. In addition to that, you can go to PastorAJ.com where you can consider partnering with this ministry and to sign up for my weekly email newsletter. Don't forget, I'm on all other social media platforms at Pastor AJ Platt. One other item that might interest you has to do with a topic that I've studied pretty extensively. It's my book, End Times Mission, that will give you a solid education on the different views of eschatology and, more importantly, your role in Jesus' kingdom while we wait for his return. This book covers the historical origins of popular end times teachings as it guides the reader to Christ's current reign in a post-millennial worldview. Oh, and one last thing. I want you to know that you know Jesus. So if you'd like to, leave a comment or send me a message so that I can help you do just that because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes.